Hey guys, gals, friends, and pals. This is Paul Eastex Twitch, and welcome to another episode of Saturday Game School, where we learn about a different game every Saturday of the year. Tonight, I'm joined on mic by Tyler. Hi, guys. And Tom, Perfect Zero. Guten Tagen. Also, Bob Jones. Ooh. Yay. And we're going to be streaming Eternum EX. Very interesting looking, classic, retro type game. Watching the intro now. After a life full of battles, glory, joys, and sorrows, Sir Arthur has gotten old, too old. All he had left is gone, and with nothing to lose, it's time to leave for Samarath, the evil subterranean kingdom, which no knight has ever, from which no knight has ever returned alive. They actually got their grammar wrong there. Legends say that its caves are full of treasures, and the demons that reign guard greatest of all. Five ancestral orbs that together provide eternal youth. Well, that would be good. Yeah, you know, like, playing as an old man isn't the most... That's not the most captivating type of character for me. I don't know about you, Tyler. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I was like, oh, that's a weird so is character this an to be playing option? as. Is there not an oh. options mode? It's just press fire to start. So that's interesting. They said Knight Arthur, which, I mean, if he's old man, he should be King Arthur. Well, he's just an Arthur. He's not necessarily the main Arthur. Arthur. Home mode and arcade mode. Save after each world. So play so save. arcade mode. Go for saves. No, play arcade mode. Oh, because Paul will die and never get past the first level. But yeah, yeah. we want the infinite Whereas with uh, home mode, you only have three continues, and then you have to start with the set of five levels. That could be disappointing. That music was totally ghouls and ghosts inspired. All right, what am I doing here, Tyler? Hey, Platinum it's Maester. like a Mario Brothers versus level. You are literally collecting treasure chests. And what's the point of opening them? Um, if you once you collect them all, then you can exit the level and go to the next level. It's like an arcade style game. Where like It's Super Mario Brothers versus kinda like that. that. Yeah, I love it. Oh I got like a teleporter there. Hey, thank you very much. No time for games. Me and Rad throwing those bits around. We do appreciate that, always. Achievement. Power. Get a power out of it. Yeah? Don't mind if I do. Uh-oh. What's that? A lot of... Oh, crap. That guy you guys look fell down. like they're from Forks and Goblins. What'd you say? It looks like they're my game Forks and Goblins. Remember that? You're not thinking of Ghosts and Goblins? Ah, uh, it might be. Yeah, it's oh, heavily one. inspired by Capcom's Ghost of Albums. I'm not doing so well. I mean, the enemies run right the heck at you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, you gotta watch out for them a lot. It's just the like dodge more. Yeah, and does his attack ever get better? Because it's kind of minuscule. Not I really. I would assume, yes. Go to the portal. Maybe just a power up or something. Would Have you played this battle? I mean, yeah, I played it today. For a while. You like it? Justin, we're glad yeah, you made it. It has its charm. <laughs> it, it's very it's very arcadey, right? Like going for scores and using strategies to improve your score and stuff like that. And so it's kind of like a, a genre that not is not super popular anymore. That is true. But it's it has that style. There's a locked chest, I wonder how we get into that. It tells you Break the chains yeah, from below. Okay. Very small writing. Yeah, you just hit it like you're hitting the other ones. I don't like that scan lines are forced on. Like, can I really not turn off scan lines? It doesn't. Are there scan right. lines on it? I didn't yes, notice. They're definitely they might pop up. They might show, show up on the screen. The frame might lines. be a little hard to see for the viewers, but there are definitely scan lines. You know, which fits the theme of the game and everything, being that it's trying to be a modern classic arcade game, but. Like you might have to go into the game's config file. That's the thing, I don't see, like, at the title screen, there was no option mode. I mean, like, in the files of the game. <laughs> yeah, maybe on PC you could do that. Oh, I forgot your next one. Indeed I am. So when you have that power up, you can shoot fireballs. Oh, neat. How long does it last? Not very really. long. <laughs> Ten seconds, yeah. And you're also invincible, like, you can walk through that and stuff. Oh, neat. That's a pretty good power up. So what are the trophies like, Tyler? Did you notice that? Achievements and trophies? Uh, yeah, they're tough. I mean, they're they're not tough. There's there's a couple that are like, come on. Like, I don't want to 
become a master at this game, which is what you'd have to do to get them all. Um, but I mean, they they expect you to be decent at the game, and they start getting a little bit more finessed. They're more balanced achievements than. You don't think that bad, Bob Jones? Oh, it's like I think it's good because. You know, it's nice to have achievements that are easy and mix, and then, you know, if you want a couple, you know, super hard ones. Yeah, yeah don't mind some hard ones. As long as they're not all like that. Yeah, they're fine. They're definitely, like, a lot better than, like, the rattle like a game, so just, like, give them to you, and you have no reason to continue playing. Yeah, that, that is disappointing when you at least have one for getting all the way to the end. You know, even right, if you want to exactly. get away from it. <laughs> the game. Exactly. You know. I, I shared a video of like a full achievement playthrough, you know? I just call it full playthrough, and somebody was like, You didn't get all the way to the end. For one of those games? Yeah, for a Rattle Like a game. As far as I'm concerned, Rattle Like I mean, that is the end once you get all the achievements. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, that's why you're buying the game. It's only for her achievement awards like you, Paul. <laughs> for those yep. of us that actually play games, we like to finish them. <laughs> How many levels or worlds are there? That is a good question. I can't really tell. It looks like five total worlds, each with four or five levels each. Correct. 25 -ish. 25 total levels. Yep. If you're playing on arcade mode, you will get to the end because you've got unlimited credits. It'll be right. interesting to see if they add any additional mechanics as time goes on. Not much. How far did you actually get it? I beat it. It's oh. probably about an hour and an hour and a half. I mean, probably about two hours, I'd say. Ah, so like a really arcane this design. Yeah. Yeah, and you're like meant to get better at it and like like what Paul's doing in opening these chests, that's how you get higher scores and that's how you get um power ups and stuff like that. It's not such a Give me those points, I want all the points. One fourth of a hundred, that is true, tech guy. Canadians are good at math, Tyler. Some good math right there, yeah. But a Canadian hundred is not the same as an American hundred. Ah, catch me. What does that little butterfly do, Tyler? I have no idea. I'm going to need <laughs> you to reach out to um, the developer, whoever. <laughs> how do you how do you catch? They're, they're fairies, not butterflies. And I like spent 30 minutes trying to figure out how to catch them. Yeah, because they fly just they right, jump they, up and they, they go mimic higher. Jump, basically. Yeah, and I've like flown up the, the tower, you know, as fast as I possibly can. Just shoot them with a range attack. Higher. But you Do usually what? don't have any ranged. Uh, you yeah, have to get lucky and have a range attack. Yeah, that is that hard. Get to it. Yeah, I got a one up. Range ones in these. That's not very good balancing if you have to have a specific lucky set to go to do it. No, it's not. That's not the solution. I don't know what the solution is, but it's not that because you can't get ranged attacks in this level. In this level, because there's no treasure chest unlocked. Yeah. Uh oh, is this a boss level? Yeah. What do I do? Just hit him. Yep. Okay. Just hit him a bunch. I can't handle that. Ah, he killed me though. Will I continue oh. right here if I die? Oh, you gotta start. Do I seriously have to start from the very beginning? From the bottom of the tower, but yeah. Oh crap. That will suck. I'm still just starting the game. So this game is a four. That's old arcade games. Yeah. You're lucky they give you unlimited lives. Uh, they don't. Unlimited credits, but not unlimited lives. That's the problem. Bye, Finn. Just Ethan, come on now. Almost there. No! Ah! Oh man, with he one would not hit left. Been, he was screwing around almost, with Almost, almost got it! He was screwing around the door and then he like couldn't get it open and close all the way and stuff. <sighs> oh, oh, kids. Yes. Hey, hey, you're the one that had the kids, Paul. <laughs> it was your choice I'm just years and years ago. I'm not going to worry about score. Oh, okay. So you said we start at the beginning of this part of the tower, not the actual first level. That's yeah, yeah. Yeah, the level. The, the tower. Not the whole thing. Good. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, see, in arcade, in the home mode, you get just three continues, and it does save your progress, but after those three continues, then you start at the beginning set of level. Gotcha. 
so you probably would have been fine, but really if you want to beat the game, this is the way to do it. And it yes, really is it. Uh, you're not going to beat it on stream, but if you wanted to like... Play a few uh, more minutes. Right, or put it in, what do they call that, suspension mode or whatever, and then pick yeah. it up again. It would be 30 to 45 minutes away at most. Okay, that's good to know. I do have to play EDF 5 with Tom later, but maybe I'll have the time. Uh, have you read? Have you guys read about how the Xbox Sex's suspension, you know, game suspension works? No, it's yep. different than normal. It, it's, it actually no, not really. It's just better. Yeah, it loads things up much faster than the. Yeah, it's it's just right more now. optimization for quick loading. But I think yep. you can turn you can turn the power off and they'll still start back where they were, right? But it's only about five games. Oh, uh, I tell you I watch PlayStation stuff is able to do that, even though PlayStation doesn't claim that it does that. Because I've seen well, people the Xbox can crash it off while the they're playing a game, and it reloads the game right where they were after the crash. You guys are talking over each other. <laughs> so you, you, that, that works on the uh, existing Xbox One, actually. Because I uh, accidentally let uh, pause the game while it was and uh, left it paused too long, and it uh, shut off the system. Uh, and uh, when the system came back up, the game was exactly where I left it. That's good. Hey, beat him that time. Oh, it's not upgrading the SSD. It's you can't add more storage. The SSD is built into the board. You gotta buy a new PlayStation if you want another hard drive. Wait, on the yeah, PS5? Yeah. Yeah. It's got a not that much different than the Xbox. You can't do much of the internet. Yeah, uh, it's it's gonna get a firmware update to allow it, but it's not at launch. Which means the firmware update for expansion could literally be like, oh, we got to launch. People are just like, oh no, I'm going to use all my storage the first day I get my PlayStation. <laughs> you know oh, you I'm are. <laughs> they buy every game, yeah, but that's not You don't use it on the first day, you're just not trying, right, Tyler? Yeah. That's right. You're talking about, uh, what is it, uh, <laughs> less than eight uh, or 800 meg? Yeah, 800. Wait, oh, I think it's 630, something like that. Yeah, yeah which like is 680. Like I, I got like three games and, uh, and I won't even have too much space for all of their content. Did you say that no external storage is going to be available? Not just SSD. Launch. Yeah. launch. Yeah. Launch, yeah. Okay. Which I thought means that it could, that, could be a week after launch. Yeah. I thought that non SSD storage was going to work. Um, uh, not on the PlayStation, unfortunately, because uh, I don't know why that would not be a priority for a platform that depends on you buying games digitally. In these yeah. Days. Well, it wasn't on the PS4 for a while, actually. Yeah, actually. that's what it made me think. Yeah, no, it was. But that, I was pissed off about it back then, too, because it makes no sense from the design Yeah, it's not even yeah, a question. But the PlayStation you 4, you can play it. Yes. You can yeah, now. but you, you, you were limited in capacity. Yeah, and like, like, so say you bought like a one gig internal, you had to take out your five hundred, and so you really your one gig is only five hundred. Yeah, yep. like an external. And to make it worse, is you could fit any larger normal. format drives. Uh, you had a physical size limit you can deal with. Yeah, that physical just... size limit has always been a hassle for me. Yeah, yeah, you it's like two point five inches or three point five inches or whatever. Two point five, and they can. There's also well, like a, just a height clearance to it, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's seven I mean, millimeter. Or that or that yeah, and that was short sighted of them to make it where not all 2.5 inch drives would fit. That's just not smart. That's just device device design. Yeah, so, I mean they could have to just given it a few more millimeters and it would have been fine, but they didn't. I mean, like I said, the PlayStation 5 is literally non hard drive replaceable, so they decided to get rid of that. That's that's a drag because I really liked that about the PS4. You know, the yeah, that's annoying. But... That's because they're selling expansion drives, so now they just want you to buy their drive because you know they like being proprietary memory sources. On the ledge on the bottom of the left, you like you see where there's two chests on the bottom ledge. Yeah. Hit the wall right next to it. I think it's like a bonus secret wall. Oh, okay. When you're on that ledge, you can hit it a bunch. All right, I'll give it a shot. I didn't know there were secrets. There's a few, oh, yeah, but I mean, it's all the points. I just killed myself. Whoops. That would be nicer, Khalid. Yeah, that's what I'm concerned with. Like, even with the the Xbox 
sex, you're going to have to be limited to buying an extra one terabyte. You know, like large storage just won't be a possibility for quite a while. Well, technically the Xbox is, in. but you're, uh, it is possible for the Xbox. You can plug any hard drive you want. The trade-off is any games made explicitly for the Series X uh, won't be take, able to take advantage of those drives. The problem but crash. any games you already own won't just have they're assuming you have the light speeds required, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of games crash. But I mean, if you know, maybe they would have. Speed, but well, any X, any games that are made for Xbox, a uh, regular Xbox One, or any other purchase, because they don't care. It's strict that the drives that are designed or the apps that are programmed for the uh, new high-speed caching method. Don't know which will be all the games. Yeah, which, for, you know, that won't be a, a worry for a little while, because uh, there are no new games right now. I wish, yeah, I mean, Microsoft dropped the ball, and they dropped it pretty far. I was complaining to my son about this. Like, the fact that they literally do not have even one hot exclusive for launch is just sad. Neither does PlayStation. It was supposed to be Halo! PlayStation has got Spider-Man, which, again, is on PS4 also, but... Yeah, that game's it's, but it's people basically a glorified it. add-on. Yeah, but people want it. Like, it's, and it has it's decently hot. It's the yeah, hot Demon Souls, Souls which is, is quite hot. Brand people are more forgiving for launch titles because they expect them to be a little bumpy because they're new, so they're fine with, you know, new stuff. Yeah. A year later, uh, accessories games will get less love because they're like, why is this a full game now? Standards will go up a little as time goes on. But I mean, that's my point. There's nothing for the Xbox like that. We just, even though last generation they had no hot launch games, they went and made the exact same mistake again, which Tyler and I have talked about. But like, still, it makes me mad every time I think about it. They, they were supposed to have Halo. They, they were not going to yeah, make that they mistake, just got delayed. but life happened. That's why you got to have more than just two eggs in your basket or something like that. It's not that they don't. Development's not exactly an easy process. Uh, so I, if not that they weren't planning on it, it's just the realities don't work out. Yeah, and but, Microsoft I mean, they learned that, that, that. There probably was others too, which they just also got delayed. Yeah, it's more the issue of Microsoft can't uh, afford to release a bad game. If Sony releases a bad game, nobody cares. If Microsoft releases a bad game, too. Well, that is certainly true. But I mean, if Microsoft was going to hope to actually catch up right early in the generation, like it, you know, things could change over time. But if they wanted the to catch up early in the generation, they, the they, would, they would need hotter games. Yeah, but uh, the I mean, they already they got advantages the on power and specs. Yeah, and, and drive. But, I mean, so. It's the same people who already have an Xbox One X who will be wooed by that stuff. But like people who want hot exclusives will still just go with PS5. And it's going to get PS5. Right yeah, but that's what's going to happen anyway. Uh, yeah, but that's that's PS5 normal. Has a better PlayStation game. people like the exclusives usually only get the you know platform people. Uh, no, well, Microsoft's exclusives have never been very good at winning people away, but um, you know, Microsoft won. I'm sorry. Hey, that was an achievement jackpot. Is that what it was for, Tyler? Yeah. Nice, a hidden brick. Glad you found that. Yeah, it was on accident. But, but anyway, yeah, like a lot of people who were Xbox 360 fans were won over to the PS4 and vice versa. Like, people do switch sides. It's not guaranteed that each side will only be the same. You know, it's not a, it's not politics where you have unthinking people who will blindly support one side no matter what. Like, I mean, it has to be. Yeah, and are you one? There are people like that. The people that true. There are people that like that. Right. Like, I mean, there, there's a lot of people like that. We wouldn't. The world wouldn't be the way it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. The reason the PlayStation Four was way, was way more successful is because people switched. Like, I mean, it definitely happens more so yeah. than in politics. That's for sure. <laughs> exactly. Like with politics, a lot of people are just one yep. thing for life. No matter what is going on in their party, no matter how ridiculous their party gets. But so it's price, and then and then Xbox just well slash Microsoft not doing what people liked when they announced the console. Man, that got them so much. Yeah. Well, I'd stop worrying about opening up all the red ones. Like, if it's easy to do, do it, but you can grab them without it. And, okay, like, yeah, I guess you're right. That would be faster. Nearly as long, yeah. 
it, yeah, I mean, this is a level that, like, the, the layout is not made to, like, you know, like, box. right next to each other, yeah, so. That's true, things are a bit stacked against me here. Just the, your character doesn't have good offensive capabilities, and the enemies can very easily and quickly fly at you, you know, fall into Yeah, they like, their tactic is to overwhelm. Well, know, that's because the PlayStation 3 and... 2 controller were terrible controllers. So, that's why you were so? happy when you moved. Yes. <laughs> I, I didn't mind. The DualShock 2 and 3 were bad. They were better off the GameStop third-party controllers. Uh, I am looking forward to the new PlayStation controller, though. It I'm looks like they fixed most of my complaints about it. Yeah, people I don't seem to really like that controller. Yeah, I've heard good things about it. I don't love the PS3 controller, the triggers especially. Um, oh, that's a fair point. Yeah, the 3 was worse than the 2. Neither I, were I never played PlayStation 2. Um, but I mean, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't as good as the 360 controller, but it wasn't like a game breaker either for me. Gotcha. This doesn't feel comfortable with my issue with it. I bought some little plastic triggers for it that helped a little bit. Huh. Yeah, and for me, if the system, the system space of controller isn't that hot, it's no big deal to me because, you know, I use third-party controllers, I use yeah, accessories well, can, that let me use whatever controller exactly. I want. Exactly. Like, that problem is pretty much solved at this point. If you just absolutely have to use the Xbox One controller, like, that's the controller that you just love, you basically can on any console. Yeah, so that's a nice thing. With some people, including, I think, Tom and maybe Bob, are like real dedicated to just using whatever the base controller is. But I mean, I have been that way. Mostly because I forget the body bombs and I get myself confused. <laughs> now I gotta get back to it. That can be confusing. Oh, I've, I've, I've done it to myself so many times. If I don't like oh, the controller. Great. Way to go, no time. And hey, Jay Bronis. But the DS4 and the Xbox One controller are fine, so I never needed to get a third-party one. That's good. Yeah, the Xbox yeah. One controller arguably is the best one. Yeah, I just wish that it didn't have the stick drift issue, because I've got all these Xbox Which One controllers for I paid 50 stick or 64, and they, and they drift. All, all of the sure you. controllers yeah. do. Switch, DualShock 4, Microsoft, they all do. Yeah, if you, just if you happen to really play lots of games. Tyler, have you heard about stick drift being a problem with the DualShock 4? Because I honestly haven't. Not really. I mean, sometimes all controllers get that. But, you know, yeah, I, I have excessive it, usage, but it's, it's definitely. I mean, it's. It. I've heard it the most by far for the Switch. Like, yeah. even yeah. compared to, like, I've heard about it for Xbox. So like, compared to Switch, it's like not even close. The Switch is supposedly quite bad. Well, on the DualShock anyway. I don't know about the Pro controller. But you also don't get a pro controller when you buy the console. Yeah. You know. See, for me, this generation, the Xbox was the first one to get it. Then it was the PlayStation, and then it was the Switch. Yeah, I actually did not experience drift at all myself. That's good. Never actually had that happen with anything other than the parts. That's be nice. I, you, controllers usually last a year or two. With the 360, the problem was the, the bumpers could break very easily. The D pad was, was terrible. Oh, yeah, and it was yeah. a bad D pad, but I mean, as far as things that work. Oh, my 360s usually the, was the triggers that went out first. Yay, Jay Bronis, thank you for the subscription. That's so nice of you, dude. I had stick drift on one of my 360 controllers, but uh, it was old too, so. Yeah, I mean, that's a problem. Like, even my. I mean, like. Practically every, I've got a bunch of Xbox One controllers, like six, I think, and maybe five, four or five of them have it. You know, that's too much. Ah. Me, it's weird just, looking. They it. wear out. So yeah, they're they 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 not very aggressive, which is kind of nice. They're definitely weird looking. Yeah, this, you know, I mean, like, there's nothing particularly wrong with this game, but it would be more fun if the main character's attack had better range. Like the yeah, I, range I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised that they, like, I mean, it's already it's also be good with a, uh, as you play, play and get a little too. better. Like, I mean, you're yeah. doing well. Like, it's not hard. Um, so I don't know that improving his attack it would just make the game easier. But yeah, when I first played it, it's like, really? He doesn't, like, shoot anything. He just swings that little staff. Yeah. It's tiny I mean, like, little range. 
the attack is part of the fun of like the feel of the game. You know, right. like there's a game Strider. I don't know if you ever played Strider, Tyler. But yeah, in Strider, you had this the really nice. Version. Yeah, you had this really nice arc on your sword. And uh -huh. th that's what this game needs is just a little bit better range. I can know? see that for sure. Yeah, you get used to it, but yeah, it's definitely like, ugh. like, and you have to get really close to the enemies. Yeah. It, Once in a great while, you just bump into them, or if they're fast, like, if you just spam it. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Oh, well, that's because the phone speakers aren't the greatest. You know what another nice thing would be is if bumping enemies from underneath hurt them, that would... That'd be kind of cool. I was wondering about that, like, the Super Mario style. Yeah, why not? Because you're already encouraged to bump blocks from underneath. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I think it's because the platforms are solid, while in Super Mario's they were movable. They are. I mean, they they got the engine going the way they wanted, and they called it a day. But I, I'm just these are things to me that would make you just feel a little better. Mm -hmm. ah. But at least the I mean the core gameplay certainly feels a lot better than Ambassador of Fracture Timeline, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, this game looks pretty fun. Yeah, this would be a nice game to play for like you know a little time. It's fun. To, it's fun to get good at it. Like, like I mean, on my second playthrough, I was able to you know beat the top high score and get some of the little bit more difficult trophies and stuff. So I mean, you get good at it pretty quickly. Um, there's a, there's one like in every arcade game, which is like beat the game without a continue or whatever. And it's oh, like yeah, no death. Yeah. Usually yeah. they have a no death one. Yeah, there play might be seriously. a no death one. I don't remember, but yeah, yeah. And another reason this is better than the game I keep mentioning is that it, it's got more variety to it. You know, like the backgrounds change and there are, there's not just one type of enemy. Yes, you know, like, the enemy variety is one of the best parts. So that's a good thing, because they could have just used the one enemy type for the whole world, you know, for all five levels, and that would be important. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you just found another secret well, Usually with I world did. design, you means you have different design for each world. Yeah. But even within one world, isn't there a difference? Like, is this background the same as the one that I was on two rooms no. ago? It know. changes every single room. Okay, good. Yeah, that's more like it. You know, give us stuff like that so it's not boring to look at. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, so all 25 stages look different. <laughs> so can't go wrong with that. Hey, homie Drew, we're glad to see you, dude. The little locked chests are a nice little, tiny little mechanical change that make things a little bit different. It would have been nice to have a few more, but, um, but nothing. Chests yeah. you have to, like, jump on top of. Yeah, underneath of, but yeah. And the power-ups, I think, could be a little bit more varied, too. Like, like the, um... Uh, teleport one is that one that's fading away that Paul just missed. Like he already has teleports. Like it doesn't do anything, but you still get like <laughs> six or seven of them each level if you go, you know, for a lot of the power ups. Yeah, I guess you're right. So there should be a greater variety, like in Bubble Bobble or something. Bubble Bobble. Yeah, Bobble. exactly. Oh, yep. There's different routes you could take through a level, and that would kind of affect your experience. Like, I was just thinking about, like, clearing the very bottom first on this mm -hmm. one instead of... Yeah, I mean, that's typically the way to go as you play, you'll realize it, because, like, going from the top, you're gonna have one green one up there, and it's like, shit, I have to go back up here anyway, so you start from the bottom and start working your way up is the way to play. Nice. Yeah, because then you can open more chests. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Always go with chests, what can I say? <laughs> as long as you're not actually trying to open all those chests. <laughs> That's true, I can't open all the chests. I mean, I end well. Some chests do not belong to me. Oh, so that little thing is catching on fire and it killed me twice. It yeah, I hate that. I hate that freaking thing. It's like a proximity mine or whatever where you just kind of need to run over it and not stop on it. But yeah, it, it killed me so many times. Break the chains. Because it's just really hard to see. Yeah, it is. Well, it's tiny. Very innocuous. You guys watch anything cool this week? Um, no. Wow. The Mandalorian. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Want, I haven't watched that yet. Is that also it, watching out? the space no. show that Disney Plus has too. The right stuff. How's that? 
Oh yeah, I saw that on my when I was browsing. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I mean, it's I pretty should... similar to For All Mankind, except for it's more historical instead of what if the Russians were first. Hmm. I should just start watching that uh, Netflix uh, series, uh, The uh, Queen's Gambit. It's actually really good. Yeah, I heard great things about it. What's it called? The Queen's the Gambit. Chest oh. Okay, I've, I've seen that one on my web browsing too. Yeah, I kind of started watching because I was bored, but I really got into it. Yeah, everybody who watches it says it's great, so it must be. And you don't even have to like chess or, or know a lot about chess to enjoy it, right? Nope. No, they do uh, give you plenty of opportunities if you do want to know about chess. <laughs> yes. There's a, yeah, there's most, a new anime most, on Netflix, like a mythology show. I can't remember what it was called. Have you guys seen that? Oh, yeah. It's not an yeah, anime. I know what you're talking about. It's just a... Just DreamWorks or something? Yeah. It's... It looked cool in the pictures. It's on my queue. I don't, I'm honestly... Not a lot of people it. I've heard say it's good. Nice. I'll have to check it out. What's it called? Do we know? Do something. Oh yeah, uh, Brandy points out that we've been watching Doctor Who. We're we're on Doctor Number Nine, you know, the start of new Doctor Who, and we're, yep. we're near the end of the season. We just watched the the Empty Child and the you know the two part Empty Child episode where they meet Jack Harkness and such. And, uh, and that's Captain it. Jack, awesome. Yeah. yeah, he's a fun character. It's a shame he didn't appear enough in it. You know, they took him off to Torchwood, but Torchwood is unfortunately a pretty terrible show on the whole. Uh, it wasn't that bad. It didn't last they, to me, you know, the first season I quite liked, and then season two and whatever they did for three just kind of blew all the goodwill. So, I, like, I don't even want to go back and watch it anymore, knowing that they kill like basically every character. You know, that's it's like the only good or the best thing about the show is the characters. And you're gonna flush them all down the toilet? No, thank you. Yeah, that's a common British thing. <sighs> I sure don't appreciate it. But I mean, killing a character now and then, that's fine. But yeah, all the characters, that was too much. Hurts the show. What, what's much. the. The 10th one is the Peter Gabilly, right? It was Nine Smith? Yeah, yeah, Max. Oh, uh, no, uh, there's the guy that was one season only. Yeah, Chris Eccleson is. Yeah, but, oh, well, yeah, nine. but that he was like six or seven. No, he's. he's uh, nine. no. Yeah. Oh, so you're watching, oh, so you're way, oh, okay, yeah. so you're way, you're, you're, you're like 15 years behind, okay. Uh, yeah, no, he well, just got to the, the new series. Okay. Yeah, um, Brandy has not, was not into Doctor Who before, you know, so we're starting at the beginning. Like, I showed her a few random Matt, Matt Smith episodes that I quite like, and that was enough to get her interested in, so then we're starting at the beginning, so we can... Okay. Well, she'll, she'll like Tenet. Tenet seems to be most people's favorite, so... Tenet yeah, is Matt wonderful. Smith Tenet. I like Matt Smith better, although um, certainly both of those doctors have some bad episodes, you know, like some egregious... Well, there are plenty episodes. of bad episodes, but the characters are awesome. Well, and yeah, Tenet had a long agree. run. That's another reason, too. Yeah, he had a long run, which means he had more good episodes in total, probably. Yeah, I have to say, it's the one thing I don't like about the way that they're going to Back to the new Doctor Who, they don't have a lot of episodes in. They have they take long hiatus and it happens. Yes. Made all that up to make it even worse is the uh, short runs for each Doctor. Yes, that's again a, another British thing. But but it's it's a bad thing. Like Doctor Who is their hottest property, and they can't get their act together enough to make a season every year, and that's on them. Like they are losing a lot of money comparatively. Yeah, that's a normal British thing. No, do you? It's, also, it's actually the okay, same so. issue as well, because it's cost them a lot of money. You have to remember they, uh, that the history of Doctor Who was a show they tried to keep. Yeah, but since it's BBC's most popular show, they don't uh, mind it. Well, besides the sports one. Uh, man, this tower is tough, Tyler. Yeah, they get easier. And, well, like, you play it and you get more used to it, but yeah, the towers are the hardest parts, for sure. Gotcha. I hope the boss isn't that bad. I'm probably going to run out of life now. Uh, what is that... What could I have done about that bird that just killed me? Is it oh, not terrible? Okay, just don't just, jump into it when it's shooting. Past it, but yeah, those things are super obnoxious because they launch a bunch of fireballs at you. Okay, what's this guy gonna do? Because 
little, his little, he pops out a bunch of little circle things and they spit some fire at you. We kill him. out there first in this Yeah, I mostly, I mostly stay on the bottom. How do I hit him? You have to hit the red one. It looks like a heart. But it only spawns sometimes. Oh, okay. I see. So we gotta watch out for all the fire. That's the main threat. You can, if you get to them in time, you can kill the purple ones. Yeah, so that's what I'm here. Okay. And the fire doesn't go through platforms, so... I like that. That's helpful. Ah! Again, all my lives are used up on the tower, so now I'm gonna climb it back up. That's fine. What? <laughs> Tyler, did you watch anything this week? I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I got caught up on the boys. Uh, I still need to watch well, that. I was waiting for all of the season to come out before I watched it. Yeah, it's out now. Yeah, why don't you tell us best. how you like that, Tyler? I like the boys. Um, season two is good. It's entertaining. I think I like it a little more than season one, uh, but yeah, they're they're good. It's a little, um, I don't know. I don't know exactly how to describe it. It's guys, kinda... you you and you're making noise, guys. Yeah, make don't don't make noise. Um, I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. it. Sounded like somebody was peeing. It did. Nah, I was pouring a pitcher. I thought it was too tight, but on his keyboard crutch, <laughs> like. No, I thought it was way, uh, far enough away from the mic that you could hear me. Uh, yeah, don't try to do a, a death count on this game, because you're also next to down. This game uh, also, it's not like yeah, it's not. You're supposed to basically practice enough to survive. Yes. Right. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a deliberately challenging game, and that's fine. Yeah, because it's not over. It's actually really not punishing much at all. Alright, waiting for these guys to start bursting out. You know, so you, you, your third run up the tower is way more smooth. You just, you get better at it. You, your brain just kind of picks up patterns. Nothing like yeah, a cool picture on a hot good. day. I missed the word Paul said. Oh. I was saying, are you criticizing my brain, Tyler? Are you <laughs> my brain? Maybe right. Really. So besides V for Vendetta, we watched um, those two episodes of Doctor Who. Well, the, the Empty Child episodes of Doctor Who, for people who don't know the titles of the episodes, it's when uh, there's a kid in a gas mask chasing them around World War II London. You know, he's like, are you my mummy? Says it over and over. It's a nice creepy, it's creepy, but they use a lot of humor to make it not be too scary. I kind of wish they would lean a little bit more into the horror sometimes. That just wouldn't be Doctor Who if they actually needed it are. Yeah, because it's supposed to be a whole stuff that's show. Insanity. Yeah. Well, classic Doctor Who often didn't have much humor in it. Like, it depends on the Doctor, because some of the Doctors are pretty funny. They based the Doctor episodes based off the personality of what the Doctor was. Yeah, that's fair. But anyway, uh, yeah, you know, it's both quite good episodes. And then we're going to have David Tennant. It will be interesting to see how Brandy enjoys it. But he doesn't like David Tennant. He's just, just, uh, just, like started just not a good human being. At the remaster of what, what are you want to call it. What's that? Are the old Doctor Who's worth watching, or should do, should people just start it? Like, so yeah, I've seen Tom some old Baker, ones. Yes. Good. Yeah. Well, <sighs> Tom Baker is the definitive Doctor. I mean, it's old TV, so you're gonna have some old TV problems. It's old. But, yeah. It's old and very low budget. Like new Doctor Who, while it is a little bit low budget compared to American shows, it still has pretty good production values on the whole, especially like the prosthetics and costumes and such. So, but my recommendation would be for most people to start with new Doctor Who and then go back to old Doctor Who if you get really into it. Because old Doctor Who, you may like a lot of people will find too hokey or too slow. Because it could be very slow, and that will turn them off, and then they won't watch any more Doctor Who. Whereas if they start with new stuff, they would have been more likely to get into it. Because they don't realize that TV changes over time, so they're like, "What is this show? It's terrible," and they don't realize that's what TV was like back then. But, I mean, you just can't expect everyone to say, okay, I didn't really like this, but I'm going to go ahead and watch five more years of it. Or oh, yeah. It, it's also a lot, and there also it's not all been available because some of it's lost on how, because of how old it is. Yeah, some of the older ones. But if you have Amazon, uh, isn't it, 
is there any free Doctor Who to watch right now? I can't remember. It's not on Amazon Prime anymore, or is it? Did, did they move to HBO? I have no idea, yeah. honestly. But uh, be yeah, HBO BBC right? used to actually try to just show Doctor Who episodes. <laughs> yes, they re- they recorded over their old episodes extremely short-sightedly. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, well, that, it was, 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 was Malice. That's why there's a they bunch of losses. They hated Doctor Who. Man, I they, really they don't seriously like hated it. Those levels hard. There's tons of those fire things. The yeah, at the bottom. And Doctor Who had a fandom back in the old days, but it was in spite of BBC, not because they encouraged it. Yep. Uh, yeah, they were on Netflix. That was nice. But it moves around. There's a streaming channel, a streaming network called BritBox that would have them, right? I think. Yeah. See, I think when HBO Max came out, I think Doctor Who moved there. You could be right. I should check. I haven't really looked. See, putting a right landmine, now. putting one of those flaming landmines under the green chest is just rude. It's a bait! It's a trap, Paul! It's called a trap! But it's annoying, because you, can you even tell when it's going to go off? I don't know if I can tell. Yeah, it's when you walk over it. Just don't stop on okay. uh, it. I thought it was a tiger or something, maybe. Okay, it looks like they only had the new series of Doctor Who. On HBO. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. If you get into the old stuff, you can just buy the seasons or episodes individually. They sell it on everything, like Pluto and Amazon and whatnot. Pluto TV has the Doctor Who channel. Oh yeah, that's a good point. And the Pluto channel shows only classic Doctor Who. Doesn't show the newer stuff, right? I would assume so, considering that. I think it's all pre Eccleston. Yeah. And that's fine, because I would, uh, back before Brandon and I got together, and I would go to sleep watching TV and put that stuff on and watch a few episodes and go to sleep. Oh, I wasn't watching Ninja Turtles. Cause... Yeah, there's a whole group, club, that tries to archive all Doctor Who stuff to see if they can get all of it and they've been doing that for decades they actually found like a couple years ago a big batch of episodes that were supposed to have been destroyed that someone that worked at the bbc kept because they didn't want it destroyed neat but yeah, yeah. that arch- they actually archived some a bunch of episodes not too long ago the other thing they'll do is they'll take the audio of an episode where the video has been lost and they'll animate it and the animation's not good but it's still a decent way to watch those episodes and i buy all of them But yeah, I mean, people didn't think people would watch TV again. They were like, it was aired and that was it. Like, they thought TV was just going to be that for decades. Uh, yeah, but I mean, for up until VCRs were invented, that's fine. But once VCRs were invented, come on now. I mean, and that's why in the 70s and 80s, they stopped doing that. Let's see. More contests coming up. Beat the game in one sitting without continues. Yeah, that would be hard. Although, like when I was doing my high score playthrough, I got up to like 17 lives. So, I mean, you can really start stockpiling lives as you get better at it. That's Although, it would, it would still be hard for the last couple bosses. Are they going to be rough? Uh, they're tough. I think you'll if you make it to the dragon, I, that would be the prediction of where you get stuck. So, oh, it's, the, it's the fourth world boss. Can't wait. Uh, that enemy appeared right on me. Once in a while, they spawn on you, and it's quite yeah, it's not fair. They give you, like, a split second if you're paying attention, but if your eyes are, like, elsewhere to, you know, look at chests or whatever... Yeah, See, you my eyes are always looking at chests, Tyler. That's right. Well, who yeah, would ever would take their eyes off the chests? <laughs> For reals. There, there aren't very many compelling reasons to do that. Man, they got some really low achievement support for you guys. Yeah. Ah. So like the the hard ones must be like 150 or. 150 yeah. The six. the no death ones probably like. Super high. That's one nice thing about PlayStation trophies is that there's only four tiers. Yeah. So nothing's truly worthless. Right. Exactly. Like, you know, you'll end up with like 35 out of a thousand. 
Christmas or whatever. Don't like zero point <laughs> trophies? Well, I mean, many have said it was only a six month time exclusive, so May is actually a little later than that. What, what game are you talking about? A fall. Oh, I didn't know it was exclusive. It's or, like, I didn't timed. know it was. Yeah, it's a timed. I didn't know it was timed. Yeah. And the PC like, version is coming out at the same time as well. It's just coming to Xbox. Where... You said Titanfall? What game are we saying? Fall. Godfall. Godfall. God, yeah. Thank you. Finally, it's one of the only it. actual exclusives on PlayStation. As opposed to the uh, not Xbox. <laughs> yeah. They've got some. Like, <laughs> It's because Sony's still interested in doing exclusive. Microsoft has said they're not. Well, well I mean, they have said that. I don't think it's good. Oh, they're, they're, they're all for it. They also spend tons of money on it. Yeah, Xbox oh, needs goodness. to catch up this gen. I don't want to be the redheaded stepchild with my favorite platform all generation. But we'll see. Oh, you're fine. Let's buy them all, you're good. Play whatever. True, but that's the thing. Like, I would rather—I still always would rather play on Xbox if, it was, if I was given a choice, you know. So, like, Dragon Quest XI coming out on Xbox—that's great news to me. I was like, I, I will get more, a little bit more out of it for it being on that platform. I always go for whichever game has the most content, I mean, whichever platform has the most content. So, if there's exclusives on one, or if there's a fancier version on one, but sometimes that means it comes out later, and so you decide yeah. to wait or not. But uh, that's one thing I could talk about a little bit. The the demo for Dragon Quest XI S, which I mentioned in the newsletter, the demo came out earlier this week, and so I've been playing that a lot on the Xbox. Or a lot for me, because I just don't have a lot of free time to play games. But I've played over three hours, and that's good for me during the week. And uh, anyway, you know, I've already played a bunch of the game on Switch, but when it was announced for Xbox, then I stopped playing the Switch version, because I, you know, I don't have unlimited time, so I'm just rather the Xbox. Yeah, because this, at the time, the Switch version was the fanciest version. Yeah, it was. And this, this is not, like, the graphics are this very similar to the Switch version, although they do run at a higher resolution, better frame rate, and that makes a big deal. I mean, it makes a difference. But the textures but, are the same, it's just they can faster. Yeah, the lighting effects, though, in the original PS4 and Steam versions were better than what we get in the S version, and, you know, that's a shame. There's comparison screenshots you can watch, and you'll see way better shadows on, you know, on the old versions. But the, the thing is, the S version has way more content, and that counts for a lot, because the content is cool. And it has orchestrated music or chiptune music, so the, and the orchestrated music is cool very good. So which version is on Xbox? It's S. Really? Right now it's, it's, it's is the S out on Xbox? Yeah, it's no, this, I thought it hadn't came I yet. mean, it comes out at the beginning of December, but I mean, the, the yeah. demo is out, and your progress transfer's over, so there's no reason not to start now if you want. And I do want, so yeah, I'm getting as much as I can out of the demo before the real game comes. Huh, interesting. So only the PlayStation version has the better graphics, but also lacks the other features. Well, at PC version. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the original Dragon PC version game has well. just been weird for multi-platform, because each platform's had something different. Strange. I mean, I do remember that, like, like I felt like it was okay that Switch had a different version, because it was obviously going to be, like, you know, downgraded and not as powerful and stuff, and so they found ways to add other things. Yeah. But it's a little bit weird that they're, that they're doing that version for Xbox, although it kind of sounds like maybe that's the better version. It's still the better version overall because you get way more content. It's content, it's content right. yeah, it's content that Dragon Quest fans would like. It's not useless content or something. Huh, interesting. I mean, I mean, you got like the whole 2D mode also. Although the demo doesn't let you try 2D mode, which is a shame in my opinion because they should really show off everything this new version will do. But, ah, all these guys. Break the chains. I'm glad those guys can't go through and yeah, they probably can go through the mud ones, though, or the lighter ones. So watch out for that. Maybe not. Huh. Unless they go through the mud. Maybe if they're gone. Oh, yeah, because they disappear and they appear. I see that, yeah. Yeah, but you can jump up through the lighter colored ones. Man, so putting a disappearing them, platform but... under the green chest. <laughs> Told you, yes. they like traps. There's a lot of little tricks. <laughs> 
You only have to hit it twice to be able to pick it up. You only have so to I can get it now. So it yep. Those girls are fierce. Yeah, they're one of the harder characters in the game. They're, I don't know if they're more like Medusa's looking hey, Panda Panda. Or, I can't tell. Yes. I think they're kind of their own take on monsters. I think they kind of went for original. They kind of based their characters on something else. Ow! Yeah, they're, they're fairly original enemies. That's a weird looking avatar. It looks like a Simpsons character. Please. Tech guys. Uh, Emoji, I guess, not avatar. Oh yeah, the big eyes and the yellow skin. Dang it! Yeah, just the hitbox and then somewhat appearing on you sometimes and stuff can be frustrating. Oh yeah, in this type of game, they make the hitboxes just extreme. Crap! I hate to say it, but I'm getting a bit fed up, but we'll keep trying. It's not, there's not a lot of like evolving mechanics or something that's really gonna hook you. Yeah, and that's a shame, because new mechanics later in a game do... Basically, is if you like it, you'll like it, because then it with the variety, you still feel fresh. Remember, some people love the challenging games, or the, the games that encourage death. They get to fight the game. Yeah, some people do. And it's not that I mind a challenge in particular, but like I said, just some of the ways that the challenge is delivered... Oh, it cheats. Yeah, are a bit cheaty and a bit annoying. Annoying isn't a good idea, you know, for a game developer anyway. But different people have different tastes. But I do have to, I mean, I really want to thank the publisher for donating. Do you have the insider version of my of the Xbox platform, Jono? Because that happens all the time. Huh? What? You can play Gears Tactics early. Gears Tactics. Which means it's probably on the Insider's preview. Hey. Well, it's available on, wi on Windows, so you can also be playing it there. Because you're talking yeah, about the console version. I don't think he plays on computer, I could be wrong. It's not common, but games do pop up early sometimes. They're just easier to notice when they do now, because everybody talks about it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, well, this this run is going better than the last one. Ah! They still got it. It just takes practice. Those jumping yep. ladies. Straight. Yeah, they're hard. Yeah, see, so it looks like the PC version was out already. So the console version had it. It makes sense if it was called Tactics because that's not like strategy on a TS game. Yeah, You're... typically a PC game, but it's nice if they yeah. release it on console. I'm glad they did. Either that or maybe they released it early because they lost their Funko Pop game because nobody played it. Yeah, yeah I saw the thing closed it out or whatever. I played it for a little while, but they just made it worse and worse. Like, every update would rebalance the characters to an extent that I didn't care about anymore. It's like, oh, the characters I like aren't good now. No, thank you. That's annoying. Yeah, it was an annoying game. I mean, it's a good idea, like, having them be Funko Pops, that's cool. But it deserved a better game. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, well, hard. I want to game it game. Oh, it's... I have no idea how you're actually supposed to get that heart. I looked at it too, and I'm like, what? Why? What? Got a duck and roll! Did you see that? The butterfly actually came near me, but I didn't react quickly enough. Oh, look at that. So you fall, you have to fall way down. Hmm, you might have just fallen. Yeah, the butterfly follows you, and you can land on it. So you basically have to calculate where you fall. That's super stupid. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you get a butterfly, you get a cheap man. I'm just gonna kill myself right now, though, so I'll have the full amount of lives. Yeah. Well, I mean, you'll probably need to practice a few times anyway, but you're right, like... Just being at that disadvantage is not Yep. Hmm. Grace GG Tech Guy says, what is, is that, like a... 
winner. Full of swag. Yeah, and, and thank you to Brown Meister for running the contest tonight. Icky is out with his dad, out on the town, I believe. He's a good son. That's cool. Yeah, I, man, I haven't seen my dad since my birthday. But I, I don't really trust him to social distance and things like that, so I'm just kind of afraid to get around him. I mean, I'm, I trust my family, and I still only see them when it's mostly, you know, like, necessary. Like, a lot of the kind of casual hangouts or visits or stuff are just dialed way back. That's good, Tyler. I'm glad you're... Well, I try not to see anybody because I see a bunch of people work every day, so... Yeah. Yeah, and that's me at school, too. You know, school, obviously, is one of the most dangerous kind of jobs you can have for casual disease. For sure. And different schools take more or less precautions. Than yeah, and the numbers right now are, like, insane. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're highest it's been, which is great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I'm afraid thing. people aren't yeah. going to care because, man, of the two big holidays. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not going... Almost certainly not going to my family's Thanksgiving or to Brandy's, but uh, but I don't know. Brandy mate, it's a problem. You know, we've got a partner whose feelings you have to consider, so we'll see what ends up happening. But it's, I would prefer not to go to large gatherings. I mean, who do you mostly see? The place to regularly pause it. You, Brandy, in India. Wait. Like who do I see at home? Yeah, like regularly, like yeah. Moment. Brandy and no, Brandy and her daughter. I hate to say it, we we haven't talked about this on stream. I haven't seen India in over two months. Oh, I didn't. Know and her mom is denying me my visitations, so mm. uh, that's. But I don't really have the money to take her to court at the moment. She's taking advantage of the situation. Yeah, she just well, her mom is can be a real jerk sometimes. Like that's one reason why we're not together anymore. And over the years, sometimes she's been very nice, but every now and then she'll just... Just gets in a mood. Yeah, I don't know what to do about it. Yeah, so I would say just have something with Brandy. That would be fine for me. I, I did that once a long time ago. I, uh, me and an ex, we made a whole full Thanksgiving dinner, you know, turkey and all the traditional stuff, and it was just for us. Maybe my mom came over too. That's what I'm telling people is like basically just stick with the people that you see anyway every day or almost every day, and that's only the people you should have for the holidays. You're already seeing them a lot, anyways. Yeah, so it doesn't significantly increase your risk. <sighs> Died. <laughs> yeah, outside of work, I don't see anyone just because it's like if I get it, it's gonna be from work so there's no point avoiding that so you have to you're going to work still we do well this is an unofficial this is what me and my boss decided because we're in a smaller department what it is is we alternate one of us stays home for a week and then the other one stays in the office so we're alternating working from home hmm. but sometimes that still doesn't work because the day might be too busy so but that's what we try. That's different. Tyler, have you started looking for work yet? So I'm working a part-time job. Like, when I was leaving my full-time job, my old boss called and said, hey, we have this, like, part-time web tech job available if you might be interested in doing it for a while. So I'm just doing that from home for now. Nice. Is that going to be enough to cover all the expenses, or are you still having to use savings? Um... It'll be close. We'll have to see. You actually started it or not yet? Yeah, I started this week. Oh, I'm cool. Yeah, it's not a good time to be without a job. What are the hours <laughs> that you work, Tyler? Uh, usually it's 10 to 4, but I can mostly set my own. Who needs? Yeah. Yeah, it's Thanks a lot of fun. So that's like 30 hours then. Yeah, it's 29 per week is what I can do. So Friday I have to cut back a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's like that. And... Uh, it's. I mean, it's working on just maintaining the website and, and addressing like the 
super issues simple as needed. updates and requests. Yeah, like so mine is just like, hey, change the you know pictures of the faculty members on this page or update this. So that's that's what our stuff. web design does. Yeah. Basically, we like we change it up like whenever we get a new one, basically. So their first like six months is them redesigning it, but after that, it's other just requests. A lot of maintenance stuff, exactly. And so like when bigger projects come up, like with COVID, we've had to build like a million web pages with different safety type things and stuff. Um, that's where like the full time employees on the web team will take in, um, whereas I'm still mostly just doing the the easy yes, stuff, which is fine with me. You, we can talk about your Thanksgiving plans. Yes. <laughs> well, I hope. I mean, I hope there will be some kind of good Thanksgiving. I don't want to spend the whole time worrying about getting sick. <laughs> swing, swing at him when he does that dive, and he won't hit you. And then when he's on the ground walking around, that's when you hit him. Gotcha. Esports funding, huh? That's gone a little wacky. Some are putting more money in it, some aren't because they're unsure if it's stable right now. Because, you know, all the sports are just wonky right now. Who's focused on esport funding? Uh. Um, if he's talking about it, I don't know if he's talking yeah, about it. Yeah, uh, catch. Dang it. Uh, this is embarrassing. I should be doing better at this. But um, I'm a bit disengaged at this point. Yeah. But, you know, I could see playing this for 20 or 30 minutes at a time and not getting kind of fed up with it, but at the moment I'm a bit fed up with it. You're tired. Like, you've been playing it for an hour and a half. Yeah, that's a bit too long to play this particular game. Well, the problem is the, ho the, the home mode, which saves your progress, also you only have three continues. So, like, the later levels, like, you have to get through five levels <laughs> in 15 lives. Yeah, so that's, that's not great. It's just going to be a little bit harder. It's easier to sit down and blast through on arcade mode. Um, I know. I'm not representing myself very well, but, you know, I mean, we're doing Yeah, yeah I mean, you're streaming and we're talking and, yeah. Yeah, like I said, anyone that's thinking about Thanksgiving, just keep it between whoever you see pretty much every day. That's it. it don't have advice. any more than that. Well, that's not good for me. I see a lot of people every day. <laughs> but see, you're already exposed to all those people every time, so it's not a change. So, so you live by yourself. Oh, literally, no. That's my job. I just be going to these houses. No, he always goes to somebody's different house, but you don't uh, like have to uh, sit next to them the whole time or anything, which is good compared to how my this, job is. Sadly, I don't officially have to, and I'm supposed to stay away, but they don't seem to understand that. <laughs> well, it's because <laughs> a lot of people are still anti-doing anything. Oh yeah, like I look at my social media and can't believe like how many people are just out and about on Fridays and Saturdays. Like yeah. you know, nothing's going on. You can tell whether I approve of some what someone's doing or not by if I like their post or not. Because like I'm on Facebook a lot, so I see most of what my friends post. But yeah, if they're being irresponsible, I definitely will not like that. Yeah, I mean it's. It, I I feel like America has given up and it's just like all right, we'll either need a vaccine or this thing is just gonna like go around for. Oh. No, we do need to respect science and facts and, you know, just rational thought. So, it would be nice when we get back to that. Being and yes, I finally beat the punk. Rational thought is not a marriage job. So, we've been playing Eternum EX. I guess it is a sequel to regular Eternum, for all we know. But we've been playing it on Xbox One. It's also on PlayStation 4, Switch, and Steam. It is $8.00. And if you like classic arcade games and have kind of a tolerance for the, you know, the high degree of difficulty in sometimes unfair situations, then you'll probably have a good time with it. I had an okay time with it, and Tyler also seems to have had an okay time. Yeah, so, I like it. Right on. So, yeah, it's not a bad game at all, especially the price, $8. That's a good price for what it is. So thanks very much to the developers and publisher for donating all these codes. They were so generous. Thank you, Tyler, for co-hosting as always. Yep. Happy to be here. Bob Jones, thanks for popping in. All right. Have a good night. Perfect Zero, Tom, always great to have you. Always a pleasure. Brown Meister, thank you for running the contest. Icky, thanks for stopping by. Thanks to all of you for watching, and we look forward to hanging out with you next week at the same, same bad time, same bad channel. We love you, and don't hate. Appreciate it. See you, guys. I think it's a... That ought to hold those little SOBs. The C, Thyridia, Tech Guy, Grailmeister, Jono, 
Holy Drew was here. Did anyone see Platinum Ace Trick? I don't think he was here tonight. Yeah, he was here. Oh, okay. hey, he was here. He was here okay. earlier at the start. Nice. Okay, and BX Latino Heat, of course. Can't forget him. Darker player. Spazpole. Nice to see Spazpole again. And we had Ectotastic. Probably some others. If you want us to say hi to you, don't be sure to say something in chat before the video ends. <laughs> you know, make it easy sometimes. Oh, I found another one of those hidden score bricks in the very first level. Oh really? Yeah, I don't. I don't know how many. I don't know how many there are, but there's probably a lot. There's a trophy or achievement for finding all of them, but.